is Tuesday, October 1st. You know that song, Wake Me Up When September Ends? Well, wake up. September's over. It's October 1st. And this is the Year of Our Lord 2019 Pre Algebra. We are opening by going back in time a couple days to page 77 and a request to go over 31 through 34. Number 31, it's about temperature. It brought you back to your formula you learned, I know in fifth grade, maybe even in fourth, I don't know, but at least in fifth, Sydney learned how to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. If they give me Celsius, I can tell you what is in Fahrenheit. Now, one of the things you might have found interesting if you did this problem correctly is that when they gave you a temperature, when you first learned this, you noticed that the Fahrenheit temperature was always way higher than Celsius, right? Like, it's 32 degrees outside. We call that freezing. That's the point that water freezes, right? Well, in Celsius, that's zero. zero. Very good. And if it's water boils at 212 Fahrenheit, but in Celsius, it's 100. It was another one of those reasons why I tried to convince you that, hey, the metric system really does make way more sense than our English system. As much as I tried to resist it when I was young, Lauren, when I was young, I'd be like, I'm American. What do I care about the metric system? Did you ever think that way? Yes. Lauren, did you ever think that way? Psst. Did you? No. no? Anybody ever with me? Like, why do I got to learn this? I'm American. Thank you. I'm not the only one. So, you don't like math. I like math. Oh, so the metric system I didn't want to learn. And then I learned it. I'm like, whoa, way easier. Everything's based on 10. Even the temperature, 0, 100, freezing, boiling. Well, look at this. If the Celsius is negative 34, the Fahrenheit's a larger number, but not very much, is it? Negative 29.2. If you didn't get negative 29.2, and you're like Micah, Micah, did you get negative 29.2, page 77? Do you even have it with you? What? <laughs> If you're like Preston, Preston, do you even have this page open in your math notebook? Is this like such ancient history to you that you have no idea where it's at? See, Bella has hers open now. Okay, that's where you should be. If you're a living human being, right now, you should be on page 77 in the book. And in your workbook or your notebook, you should be looking at your answer. Did you get this? Okay, if not, you need to be finding out why you didn't get it. You plug in negative 34 here. Why did I write this over here? Because when you multiply fractions, you get 9 fifths times, right now I'm ignoring the negative sign, 34 over 1. You can't cross cancel, so you do the multiplication 306 over 5. That's how I got that. What is 306 over 5? 306 divided by 5. That's how I got 61. I could have put 61 and 1 fifth. 61.2. And now i got to remember it's negative. You're adding unlike signs. What's the rule? Signs are different. Find the difference. So you find the difference between 61.2 and 32. It's 29.2. Use the size of the larger value. Sit. Okay, how about number 32? Did you get negative 21 over 50? Really? Yes. That's impressive because for some reason, uh, using Bella's words, when we start to get answers that are not whole numbers, we start to think we did something wrong or... So, like because we think fractions aren't people or fractions aren't numbers too they are that's the right answer or you could have written negative 0. 0.42 you see how those are the same 21 over 50 is the same as 42 hundredths 0. 0.42 You already got that? You got that right too? I got point for the two. Okay. Any questions? No? 
we're just waiting on whatever today's work is. We, we, we sit there and hope that he goes fast today and we can just get our homework done and go on to the next day. Yes. Oh, how we pray that there would be one, two, maybe even three students that are like, you know what? I think learning is important. No. Wouldn't that be so nerdy? I think I actually want to learn, and I think that all the knowledge that I'm gaining, I will use in my future, and it's going to make my life better. Instead of, for the next 34 minutes, I just hope to survive and get as much as the homework done as I can so I don't have much, and then we'll see what the guy has to say tomorrow. And I'll try to remember it so I take a test and tell, yay, Mommy, I got an A or B, and then life will keep going on. I hope that's not what we're doing. Noah. I don't understand it. Okay. This one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Why did I substitute a 50 there? Because they told me, Noah, in the instructions, that B was worth 50. Okay. Are you got your book open? Yeah. Okay. So what is B squared, Noah? Squared. 50 squared is 2,500. Do yeah. you accept that or do you need me to write it over here? Yeah, I accept that. Okay. And then C, they told me is worth 20. So what's 2,500 plus 20? 25 points. Yeah. Okay. Then they told me since C was worth 20, if I square that, C squared, do you agree that 20 squared is 400? Yeah. You with me? Okay. So if I do 400 times 15, I'm ignoring the negative sign for now, I get 6,000, but I can't forget that it is negative 15. That's what A was worth. So my answer here is negative 6,000. This becomes 2520 over negative 6,000. And then what did I have to rely on? Remember these things you learned back in fifth grade called divisibility? I had to rely on my divisibility rules to break this down to its lowest terms, negative 21 over 50. I divided by 10. I got 252 over 600. Then I divided by 2. I got 126 over 300. Then I divided by 2, and I got 63 over 150. Then I divided by 3, and I got 21 over 50. Wait, can you say that again? I have no idea. Don't you have to divide 6,000? Yeah. Okay, I could have done this. Instead of reducing it and getting a fractional answer, if I wanted to get a decimal answer, I would have done this. And by the way, this does not say, this does not say uh, 6,000 divided by 2520, it says 2520 divided by 6,000, right? And that's how we've gotten the 0.42 at the end. Any questions on 31, 32? Okay, 33, you would follow the same process here by just plugging in the numbers. And for time's sake, I'm going to give you the correct answers. And 33 actually might be in the back of the book. And then if we have further complications, let me know. 33 is negative 25, and if you got that one just because you found it in the back of the book, then if you need to know how you got that, let me know. And 34 is, 34 is a problem I would never give you on a test. Actually, I wouldn't give you this on a test either, because the point isn't to, to get you to get into all the like negative point whatever. The point is to get you to understand how to do the problem by plugging in the numbers that they give you to evaluate it. So the book gives us a lot of, frankly, the book's set up as if you're allowed to use calculators. So because I was unable to be here or unable to communicate Thursday or Friday, uh, Mr. Geis was not wrong in assigning what he assigned, but I wouldn't have assigned those numbers simply because the book's set up for students that are, hey, you can use a calculator. We don't use calculators here for a reason, because we want to be we want to train our brains to be able to handle math beyond pre-algebra, 
beyond high school. When we go out in here, we're real, real world. Okay. The answer to number 34 ends up being negative 326. I got 32. 0.7 or 2 thirds. So if you got negative 326 and 2 thirds, you got a pretty smart mama. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how that. Oh, I was going to shut that off. All right, Paige, where are we at? You had no homework. We went over the commutative and associative properties, and now we're talking about this distributive property. Who knows what the word distribute means? If I had all of your tests in my hand and I was about to pass them out, what's another word I could use for passing them out? Distributing them to everyone, right? So think about what the word means, distribute. That means to like to pass out or to, um, I don't know what the word to say. Everybody's, everybody's going to get one. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. Got it? So the distributive property tells us that we're going to take one value and distribute it to all the other values in that problem. And the easiest way to try to get you to, fix, to understand this is if I go back to the formula for perimeter of a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle, you learned this a long time ago, is you take two lengths and add two widths. Say amen if you remember that. Amen. Not everybody's participating now, so I was checking. Amen. You all remember that, right? Who remembers Mr. Franken's favorite way to write that formula? Instead of writing it 2L plus 2W, what did Mr. Franken always say? You know, actually, I prefer this. It's the same thing. David. You mean like this? Okay. This will illustrate this whole property called the distributive property. Watch what happens. If you see a number, a value outside of other things in parentheses, what's it tell you to do? Distribute this guy through those people. So what end, what's it going to end up looking like? 2 times L plus W is going to look like this. 2 times L plus 2 times W. See how they're the same formula? Yeah. And this right here illustrates this distributive property they're telling you. When you see something outside parentheses, distribute it, pass it along to every other member, every other value inside those parentheses. Does that make sense? <coughs> That's really all it is. If it's outside the parentheses or the grouping, distribute it to the whole group. You're done. Does this make sense? This was one of the formulas for the perimeter. It's the same thing. 2 times L plus W. If you use the distributive property, what do you get? That. The way you first learned it. It's the same thing. Make a sense? Let's dive in. There. I just covered page 85, 86. But now we're in the middle. Oh, sorry, we can't dive in yet. We're in the middle of page 86. Sorry, I got too fast. Go to the middle of 86 where it says in green letters, combining like terms. Combining like terms. Everybody there? Set your eyes in the middle of page 86. What is a like term? The word like there doesn't mean, oh, he likes me. It, it, uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> the word like there means the same. They're the same kind. Make sense? So you can only combine terms when you're adding or subtracting multiple or adding or subtracting. You can only combine the same kind of terms. In other words, if I have just a regular number, a constant, two. And then I have an x, a variable. 
The answer to that is not 2x. 2x would be 2 times x, right? 2 plus x, I can't combine those. If I have 2 plus x plus y, are any of those terms like? Are any of them alike? No. I've got a constant. I've got one variable and another variable. How about these guys? Are there any terms there I can combine together? I can only combine the terms that are alike. I've got an x term and a constant. No. Nope. I've got a constant, an x, and a y term. No. Nope. Is there anything here I can combine? Kira. In this one, I can combine the two like terms. They're constant. Do you know what this looks like? 5 plus x. Raise your hand if that makes sense. This has to stay as it is. That has to stay as it is. This can be condensed. This can be simplified. How about this one? Anything I can combine there? How would I make this, instead of all of this, how can I condense it? How can I make this simplified? It's the same problem, but I can make it simpler. Dina? Um, you could add the 3 and the 4 together. Okay. The 3 and the 4 are constants. I can add those together. What about x and 2x? No. Yes. Wait, no. Because they are, listen... You couldn't combine the x and the y because they're not oh. the same. They're not like. But the two x terms are. What number is out in front of that x even though I didn't write it? Two. Two. One. Yeah, this one. Oh. Even though I didn't write anything in front of it, what number do we understand is out in front of that, Mitch? What? So what's 2 plus 1, Dina? 3x three. Three plus 7. Three. This is the same as that. And why not write it in simpler form instead of writing four terms when we can write two? You with me, Case? Why write four terms when we can write two? Combine like terms. Yes, David? How do you know x is one? We don't write a one out here. This is all I'm saying. It's not one. X isn't one. I don't write a one x. That's all I'm saying. X isn't worth one. Whenever you write the, whenever you write a variable, David, like see this is two x. This is understood to be a one. We don't have to waste time writing one y, one x, one. You know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Everybody. Oh, two, like two. Oh, the x. I'm like confused. This is one plus two. That's how I got three. One x plus two x is how many x's? Three. Three. Because it's one. It's always understood to be one. Everybody good? Now we can dive in. Yes. Page 87, number... Uh, let's go right to number two. Four times seven plus eight. All you have to do, you don't, don't give me the answer. Okay. Write the same thing. Four times seven plus two. Look, think this. What's the same as four times... 7 plus 8, it's this. 4 times 7 plus 4 times 8. That's all they want in number 2. Got that, Micah? Yeah. What did they do? They took this and distributed the 4 to the 7 and the 8. That's it. That's it, LP. Number 3. Ne yeah. Negative 7 times 3 plus 2. Brett, you're going to write negative 7 times 3 negative plus negative 7 times 2. Actually, to avoid confusion, listen, since you have these two signs here together, to avoid confusion, they like to put both those in parentheses, just to make sure that there's no confusion between the plus and the minus. Four times fifteen. Four times fifteen. Yes, 
Well, what they're all they're doing in this exercise two through four is to get you to break it down. More practice with distributing the four. Right, because eight plus seven is fifteen, so four times fifteen is sixty. Twenty-eight plus thirty-two is sixty. Number four. Three times five plus three times anything difficult so far? No. Number five through seven. Combined like terms. Is 3y and 6y, are they considered like terms? Yeah. Yes, they're both y terms, Noah. So if they're both y terms, you can combine them. 3 plus 6? 9. 9, so write 9y. Why are you writing this stuff? You're supposed to be starting with number 2. Number 5, 9y. Number 6, can you combine all of those terms together? Right. And number six, can I combine 9A, 4B, and A? No. No. Are there any I can combine, Brett? Um, A and 9A. I can combine 9A with A. How many A's do I have now, Preston? Two. No. 9A and A. We're on number six. I'm combining only like terms. I can only combine constants together or terms with the same variable. I'm combining 9a with a. How many a's do I have now? What number is in front of the a even though we don't write it? How many a's do I have in that last value? Are you on page 87, number 6? Yeah. It says 9a minus 4b plus a. That last part. Plus how many A's? One. So if I combine 9A with 1A, what do I have? 10A. So number six should look like this. 10A minus 4B. I can't combine the A and B terms. But I took three terms and condensed it to two. Cameron, number seven. I've got four terms there. I can simplify that because I can combine the... I can combine the, the M's. I have a positive 8 and a negative 2. Very good. So what's that one going to look like? Number 7. What's that going to look like, Cam? Or plus the opposite two. What's that? 6M plus N... Minus 4B. Everybody got that? Why is this 6M? Because I have positive 8 and negative 2. Or if you wish, positive 8 plus the opposite of 2. Either way, 6. Dominic, you look puzzled. You good? Wait. Yes. Isn't it? I thought it was like B. M plus N minus 2M. Okay, you can't combine the N. Listen, we're focused on number 7, on combining like terms. I can only combine the M's negative? together. How is that negative? It says right there, negative 2M. Or minus 2M. Or plus the opposite of 2M. Again, Kiara, you could read it. You could, if you don't want to think of it as plus the opposite of 2M, just read it as it reads. 8 minus 2. Oh, I thought you meant like negative 2. Well, it is. Oh. Uh, Just read it 8 minus 2, Kira. 8 minus 2. 6. Well, I get that. But then you got it. What? Then you got it. Number 6. You are buying three pair of flip-flops, cost 12 dollars Whoa. 12 dollars each. Whoa. This is back in 2005. What are these people shopping? Look at the Dollar Tree. Get the flip -flops. Really? All right. Yo, listen, Bella. Surely your flip flops don't look that stylish if you get them for a dollar. I mean, come on. Look at, look at those. What is that? Paisley? Is that what that's called? I don't know. All right. I never worn it. 
You're buying them, they cost $12.90 each. They want you to use mental math and the distributive property to find the total cost. What are you gonna do? Three times 12.90. Now when they say use mental math, this is good, ready? Dominic, how would I use mental math to do three times 12.90? This is how I would do it. What's three times 13? Um, 39. 12.90 is just 10 cents away from 13. Take three dimes away from $39. $38.70. Very good. See what they did there, Dina? No, okay, Dina, it's okay if you don't get it yet, but don't, Dina, look at me. How old are you? I'm 12. You're 12. Oh, 13. So are you deciding at 12 that since you can't, since you haven't mastered mental math yet, that your whole life is never going to be able to do mental math. Have you already decided that at the age 12? No. Okay, don't do that. Practice it. They, they're, they're encouraging you to look at that problem and not have to write it out. They say, look, Kira, 12.90 is almost 13 bucks. Three times 13 is 39. There's 10 cents off of each one. Take 30 cents away from 39 to get 38.70. Okay. Okay, turn the page. Are you done listening to me talk? I'll put you on your own, but if you have questions, ask. Nine through, what did I put on there? Nine through, oh man, I did write 9 through 33, didn't I? Nine through 33. Don't get, don't get all worried about number 33. Like, you'll be able to do it. Give yourself a chance. Look, numbers 9 through 12, you just match the letters, so don't get all hasty. 9 through 33. If you have questions, ask. Yes. Yes. Huh? Navi, congratulations on making it all the way through September in math class without the need to sharpen your pencil. Back there. <laughs> That's impressive. I have a pencil. Yeah, but he has a real pencil. I have a real No. Just the fact that you have to use, just the fact that you have to use another word to describe your pencil, makes it this other pencil. Well, this is a yellow pencil, so it's but you don't have to. You don't have to use yellow. Your pencil. You felt the a need to tell me. Pencil. You felt the need to tell me it was a mechanical pencil. Well, it's a regular. <laughs> Mechanical pencils wouldn't be so bad if they didn't break every time I tried to use them. I could try so hard not to break it, and it breaks. Then it, then it breaks within first stroke. I've got no questions yet, so I'm assuming everybody's done with 9 through 12. No, no, I'm on 9. Yeah. Okay. I haven't even started. I'm just staring at it. Hoping that Dina, it let's get started. Ready? Number 9A. Ready? Or number 9. 3 times x plus 4. Which of those down on the bottom row would you match up with 3 times x? 4 and 3. What's that? 4 and 3. No, A, B, C, or D here. Which one of those matches with... 3 oh. times x plus 4. A, B, C, or D? Come on. How do you distribute the 3 through there? You go 3 times x. Calm your brain for a second. 3. Distribute the 3 to the x. What do you get? 3 times x. What's that look like? 3x. Now distribute the 3 to the 4. What's 3 times 4 look like? B. If you're just getting started and you don't have B for number 9, 
No. No. <laughs> okay. What did this say? 33. 33. You seem so hurt by that. Okay. So when that happens, I don't like this. Number 13. Distribute the 9 to the x, and what do you get? How do you write 9 times x? 9x. How do you write 9 times negative 3? So are you going to write 9x plus 27 or 9x minus 27? 9x minus 27. There's another freebie for you, number 13. The answer is 9x minus 27. Since, there's, since inside the parentheses it's x minus 3, then it's 9 times negative 3. 9x minus 27. Okay, 14. Another freebie. What's negative 12 times 4? Or, let me give you a shortcut way to do number 14. Good question. Here's 14. Here's how I would do it. Spencer, 14, did you do it yet? Yeah. I would go yeah. negative 12 times inside the parentheses. What would I do? I would combine like terms. And this would turn into 9 plus y. So then it's negative 12 times 9. Wait. Negative 12 plus y. Times y. Times y? Because you distribute, listen, when something's in parentheses, you have to multiply. You're distributing this 12 through all the people inside there. Where did the 12 come from? 12's on the outside. Everybody got 14? Negative 108 minus 12y. What I did first was... I combined my like terms and made that a 9. Distribute the negative 12 to the 9. Negative 108. Negative 12 times positive y. Two negatives multiplied together is a negative. 12y. I'm sorry. A negative and a positive multiplied together. I'm going to put 19 on the board. Yeah. Is that Mr. James? No. Mrs. Mayor? Yeah. Number 19, combine your R's, 1R and 3R, 4R plus 2S. So all they're asking you to do in 19 through 24 is combine the like terms. Is this negative 5? That is, you're going to take negative 34 times negative 5. Oh, wait. Could you have combined two things there? Yeah. 
Yeah, so you'd look at it, that would be negative 26, right? Because if we're negative. Number 16. Why did I close my book? Oh, yeah, I'm on 16 now. I don't know how to do it. I'm on 16 too. I'm on 19. Hey, 16 sounds like a popular situation. So you've got brackets and then parentheses. 19, 7 plus 4. Okay, I got to distribute the 19 through everything in here. Lauren, do I have any like terms inside of here? Inside of here. Oh. I do. Seven and negative two. I have a 7 and a negative 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, Lauren, is I'm going to turn this into 19. And then I can get rid of the brackets at this point and just turn them into parentheses because I'm going to combine the 7 and the negative 2. You see how I'm getting rid of the parentheses? So this becomes 5 plus W. This is, what number is this? See what I did? I combined the two constants, 7 and negative 2, Dina. What's 7 plus negative 2? Find the difference, 5. Use the sign of the larger, positive 5. So inside of all this, this looked complicated at first, Dina, but now it doesn't look complicated. It's just 5 plus W. So distribute the 19, and Jaden gets 95 plus 19 W. What? 95 plus 19W. You're multiplying the 19 by the 5 and then the W. Oh, um, that doesn't make any sense. Cha-cha now, y'all.